Namaste everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you for tuning in. This is Ambi. Today let us talk about Python object-oriented programming, inheritance, override, and super. So what the hell are they? Hmm? So let's have a look at polymorphism with inheritance first. Yeah. So we have already seen what polymorphism is. Poly many morphism having many forms, right? So under that, let's have a look at inheritance and override. Yeah, mark down here, inheritance and override. So let me go ahead and mm, take the examples of class one here. I wanna paste my notes here. Class one, okay. So class JL, as in Justice League, J uppercase L lowercase, it's not J1, JL. So publisher is DC Comics, DC. Uh, then work uh, is heroes, they are heroes, they, their work is doing hero stuff. Then I have a constructor, define init, self. Self dot team is equal to Batman, uh, I have a dictionary, okay. Uh, just say dictionary, so dictionary, what does it contain? Key value is the name of the hero and what uh, they do. Okay, it's just uh, something about them, right? So Batman is bad, Superman is super, Flash is speed, Aquaman, Aqua, I mean, like water, Wonder Woman, Amazonian, right? Then I have another method here that is all heroes. What it does is uh, it takes this dictionary and kv that is in self.team.items that is it will go ahead and iterate through it, a loop through it and says Batman will protect us with bad power. Superman will protect with superpower. Flash will protect us with superpower. Aquaman will protect us. You know, you get the hang of it, right? Then you have team leader function. Define team leader self. Batman is the team leader. So I've always just put Batman as a... Well, there's no need of F here. But let it be there uh, for now. Then I have pub, another method, which is written F as in formatting string, then self.publisher, who is self.publisher, DC, is the publisher. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for Avengers, yeah. So here we go, same thing for just like that, okay. Publisher Marvel, work is heroes, their team consists of this. And then the same thing, all heroes, another method, team leader is Captain America, and then you have self dot publisher okay so let me go ahead and create get all heroes of justice league batman will protect us with bad power superman will protect us with superpower flash will protect us with speed power blah 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 as you can see here this particular thing ran jl dot class and then access that particular method inside that class here all heroes right so this is one now. Let me go ahead and run Avengers here. Same thing. Cap will protect us with guidance power, Iron Man with gadget power, Hulk, strength power, Thor, hammer power, Panther with <laughs> claws power. Okay. So then let me find out the team leader of Justice League. Team leader. So it just runs the team leader function here inside the class. We are all aware of it, like you know how the classes are and how the methods work, how to access methods inside a class. Captain America is the team leader. Then jl.work is, yeah. So what work do they do? Avengers, the same thing. Avengers work is hero stuff, right? So you can clearly see that uh, class jl and class Avengers have some code in common, right? The method all heroes, pub, the attribute work are common in both the classes. Let me, okay. So Python's inheritance will help us here. So here we have a lot of common code. Uh, this is common code, this is common code, this is common code. So why should we have all this common code? Why can't we, can't there be a way where we can, I can make this as a parent, I can make this as a child, and I can make it inherit all this stuff. So that is what this is all about. So yep, yeah, here we go. All right. So <laughs> I have here um, team leader and pub and all heroes, right? Uh, all heroes and pub, they, these two functions are same. Team leader, it's Prince Batman here, it prints Captain America. So 
I have kept it as unique. So now let's see. Avengers dot all heroes. I don't have all heroes here, but let's see what happens. Okay, Cap will protect us. How the hell did that happen? As you can see here, jail. Okay, here Avengers. So I am passing this entire jail class as an attribute, just like you know how you pass attributes to class or your functions. Um, telling this Avenger, sir, hey Avenger, uh, your parent, uh, you gonna go ahead and use this jail. Jail will be your parent class, right? So since I'm passing down this entire class as an attribute, uh, like an attribute to this Avengers class, these particular functions, all of them are accessible here inside that. Unless, unless I override any of these functions with my own. So here, this in it is different, this in it is different. But since the child function has its own in it function, this will override the parents in it. And child function, I mean, child uh, class Avengers has its own team leader function that will override the parent's team leader function. So, yeah. So let me go ahead and run Avengers start team leader. It says Captain America is a team leader. So even though parent has its own le team leader function and that's supposed to say Batman is a team leader, but it says, you know, uh, Captain America because we have overwritten the parents team leader function with our own. So if you don't, if we did not have this, okay, let's say do this, right? So I'm gonna run this, I'm gonna run this. It says Batman is the team leader. All right, I'm gonna uncomment this out, run this again, run this. Captain America is the team, Captain America is the team leader. Avengers at work, yeah, heroes as usual, because that is a common code. It's inheriting that stuff directly from uh, JL class. But publishers are different, right? So if I run Avengers.pub, Marvel is the publisher. So let's have a look at super function. Yeah, what the hell the super does, the dunder, uh, it's not a dunder method. So let's take a class jail as usual, Justice League, um, I've said publishers, Marvel, you know, blah, 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 the same, what we had earlier. So let us override this init with the init from its parent class. So even though I have my own init function, just like, you know, how I have just copy pasted this, control C, right? Control V here, right? But I have added this super parenthesis dot init. So what I'm basically telling, hey child function Avengers, I wanna override your um, init function with your parents in it function uh in it method right so let's go ahead and run what happens here avengers start all heroes okay batman will protect us so all of a sudden now we have um parents uh in it function here right all of its values avengers start all heroes it says batman superman flash aquaman wonder woman but if you go here avengers start all heroes where i did not use a super function to overwrite the child class method with the parents uh, class method in it. Here, we're just printing stuff from this, right? So now let's say uh, here, um, so what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna override the team data function as well, right? So here, return, instead of return this, I wanna do super dot team leader. So parents, so team leader function. So let me run Avengers start team leader. Batman is a team leader of Avengers. How cool is that? Huh? So multiple inheritance. How can you do multiple inheritance? Very easy. Uh, looks a bit complicated, big, but trust me, it is not. Let me minimize this to fit the screen. Okay, so here I have class A and it says, Initializing class A, the init function, and method, uh, what it does is it takes um, I know, an entry, an attribute B, and it says print 
class from class A printing B. That's it. Now class B is going to take A as its parent, right? For class B, we're going to um, pass down class A as a parent. It says print initializing class B, but I'm overriding this particular init function with what? Super uh, dot init. That is, it's going to run the parents init function. Now, what I'm, I want to have another class C, and I want to pass down B as its parent. But, and I will overwrite this particular um, init function with uh, the init function of class B, right? So, but class B is running the class A's uh, init function, right? So now class D, let's, <laughs> I want to have another class D, the fourth class, and I will pass class C as its uh, parent, right? So it's a super dot init. So I'm overriding the init function of class D with its parent, that is class C, right? The same thing goes with uh, methods as well. So class D's parent, um, class D's uh, method is going to be overwritten with method of what? Uh, C because C is a parent, but C's uh, method is being uh, method function is being overwritten with its parent. Who is its parent? B. And if I go to B here, B <laughs> parent uh, B's method function is overwritten with its parent. Who is the parent of class B? A. And A is from class A. It prints just B, right? So let's see what happens. So if I run the whole stuff, initializing class D. What? Right, so it says initializing class D. So uh, I am actually running, what What am I running? I'm running class D, right? I'm saying D equals uh, this D, right? And I'm running method one. So I'm running this method from class D and I'm passing one as uh, a variable because it takes a, it takes an attribute, sorry, not variable. It's a, it takes an attribute and my the attribute, uh, the attribute I am passing to, the method of class D is one. So this is what I'm running. So let's see what happens. It says initializing class D, right? As it's supposed to do, uh, because init function will run as soon as you uh, create an object and run, create an object from the class and you run that object. So it says initializing class D, okay, that's fine. After that, it's supposed to run the init function of uh, its parent, that is C. So it says class C, right? It runs the, it says initializing class C. But class C is supposed to, after it prints this line, it's supposed to run the init function of its parent, that is B. And that's prints initializing class B. As you can see, it says initializing class B. And after that, it's supposed to run the init function of class A and it runs that right and after all this is done right then it's supposed to say class d one right so it's method class d one and then after that it's supposed to run the parents method function and the attribute is going to be b plus one for that so it is from class c uh, two right now to that, we are adding, again, uh, B is going to run the method, uh, the parent functions method uh, with and adds one more uh, integer to it, that is plus one, right? It increments the integer every time uh, it goes up the ladder um, and it becomes one, two, three, four. D, C, B, A, one, two, three, four. Uh, it it kind of looks a bit messy. Okay, what the hell is happening here? But if you just download this code, um, follow the link uh, down below, uh, download this uh, code, run this in uh, your Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab or go to jupyter.org, just Google uh, try Jupyter Online and you'll get that site and up, you know, run it there and you will know. Replace these things with your own values and you'll know. Trust me, you, you really want to know this because it will save you a lot of time and a lot of code. So let's say polymorphism with inheritance. Yep, here we go. And I'm gonna run function here. Okay, so what happened here? Class root, okay. And then I have 
created class banana, class coconut. So class fruit, uh, here it is defined about, there's a function which says this is a fruit class. And then another method is there that says taste fruits, taste good. And I want to pass this as a parent to this child class banana. A banana takes fruit as its parent class. It says define taste. So I am overwriting this parent's class with my own. That is return banana is slightly sweet. And coconut takes the fruit as its parent class. And I'm overriding the parent's taste function with my own. Return coconut is slightly sweet while shell uh, sweet and white, uh, white shell with sweet water. Right, okay. White shell uh, and has and has white shell with sweet water inside, right? So I got this. I created three objects. Object F is fruit, object B is banana, object C is coconut. So let me run this. Object F, not about. This is a fruit class, okay? Makes sense. And if I run object B dot about, it says this is a fruit class because about is common to all of these because the other two classes, banana and coconut, are inheriting their stuff from its parent class, fruit. Then I will run object C dot about. It says, yeah, this is a fruit class. Of course it is. Now let me do this. Taste. Fruits taste good. Banana is slightly sweet. Coconut is slightly sweet. Um, with white shell with, no, okay, let me run this again. Now it will run, okay. Coconut is slightly, lightly, yeah, slightly, okay. Let me make this slightly, right? Okay, so coconut is slightly sweet and has white shell with sweet water inside. That seems nice. So this is how you do polymorphism and you know, combine inheritance. Now let's look at polymorphism with a function and objects. Okay, so I want to define another function here. Fruiter, it takes an object and it prints taste and about. So here I want to do fruiter. I want to pass object B here. Object B is what? Object B is banana. So if I do that, it says banana is slightly sweet. This is a fruit class. Awesome. Now let me do that for C, coconut. Coconut is slightly sweet and has white shell with sweet water inside. This is a fruit class. Okay, so now let's look at polymorphism with inheritance again here. Okay. Well, I think, oh, well, okay. So I think I already covered that. All right. So did I leave anything with it? Oh, all right. I think that's all I had for polymorphism and inheritance and how you can use them you know, with, how we can override uh, each, uh, override methods of a child, our parents and inherit um, methods from each other using super function. So thank you for tuning in. You have a great one. Take care.